high linear algebra students. So this is the third video of the makeup classes on the invertible matrix theorem. And I want to remind you that it's important for you to keep the printed page number one of my lecture notes or the page 114 of the textbook right beside you. So that, uh, because I'm going to refer to that. Okay. So the purpose of this third video is to uh, tell you the definition of an invertible transformation and then to tell you an important theorem, which basically, which makes sense, but we do need to prove it. It's that if T is linear and invertible, then it means that the standard matrix of its inverse will be A minus one. So the inverse of the standard matrix of T. So here we go. First, the definition, and let me color code some stuff here. So Rn is the domain of T, and Rn is the codomain. Now it's confusing because uh, it turns out that in order to be invertible, you must have the same domain and, well, actually the domain and the codomain must have the same dimension, but for uh, a transformation from Rn to Rm, it just means that they're actually the same. Okay. So T is invertible, okay, if there is a transformation S that goes back from Rn to Rn, so it like takes vectors in the codomain of T and, and returns vector in the domain of T, for which if you compose S with T, it's going to give you back any vector X in the original domain of T, but it can be done the other way around too. If you take a vector in the domain of S and then you, uh, you use S on it, you're going to get a vector in the domain of T, then apply T again, you're going to get back the same original vector. Okay, so, uh, and of course, I forgot to say that in this case, we call S the inverse of T. So um, let's actually write it over here. So... In this case, case, S is the inverse of T. Okay, so I forgot to write it, but here you are. And the theorem. Okay, so let's underline a couple of important words. If you have a transformation that is linear, okay, and let's suppose that its standard matrix is A. Then in this case, T is invertible. Uh, one important part is the if and only if. Okay, so if and only if. A is invertible as well. Okay, and in that case, the inverse of T is linear. So first part that is important to note is that, okay, so it is linear. So the inverse is linear. And the standard matrix is not S. It is the, it is A minus one, okay? So the standard matrix of the inverse will be A minus one. So actually, let me underline like all of this. Okay. Proof. So as we do the proof, keep in mind the if and only if. So we're gonna start by proving this direction. Okay, so first let's suppose that T is invertible. So suppose T is invertible. Okay. Let's try to actually solve. Uh, so we want to see if T is on 2. Okay, so um, let's study. Let's study the consistency of uh, T of X is equal to Y, okay? But it turns out that this system is always consistent, right? Because... Um, this equation is always consistent 
consistent with solution with solution x is equal to s of y okay now i'm going to put the details on the top here we go so t of s of y okay because s is the inverse of t of t will actually just give y okay and this is true regardless of y of y okay so what does it mean it means that uh, t is on two okay so t is on two and of course now we know that t has a standard matrix so t which is the which is the transformation x a x is on two and as a result it means that a is invertible We are using here a part of the invertible matrix theorem. I'm just going to look at uh, which part of it we're using. It is, uh, that's it, part A, part I, sorry, implies A of IMT. Okay, so this proves the state, the, the, the arrow in this direction. Now we need to prove the other direction. So suppose that A is invertible. Okay. So suppose A is invertible. And then the idea is to consider the linear transformation using the inverse of A. So then consider S to be the linear transformation from Rm to Rm for which X is getting mapped or actually, yeah, let, let's use it this way. Um, yeah, or Y is getting mapped into A times Y, uh, A inverse times Y, sorry about that, there you go. Then what does it mean? First, it means that S is linear. So then S is linear since it's a matrix transformation. A matrix transformation. And then uh, the idea is that uh, we're going to have that, um, yes, so S of T of X, there you go, that's going to be equal to A inverse times AX. And from there, obviously, using associativity, we will have A inverse A times X, which is I N X, so X. And this is regardless of X. Likewise, if we have T of S of Y, then we use the standard matrices. We have A of a inverse of y with associativity that's going to give us a a inverse of y which is equal to i n y okay which is equal to y for every y in rn 
So as a result, we found the inverse of T. So S is the inverse of T by definition. And this is the end of the full proof. I promised under 10 minutes, so sorry to have broken the promise. Fortunately, it's below 11 minutes, <laughs> but all right, hopefully this helps. And the last video is just going to be an example in which we're implementing that. See you there.